Hello and welcome everyone, Ducky O'Brien here, and today I'll be bringing you guys another automation idea, the organic destroyer. That's right, this pesky organics will bother you no more after you build this production line. Alright, why don't we get into it? I'm using the drone right now because it's so cool. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, I got some video ideas coming up later. So you'll see that more highly produced at an edited. But why don't we go over it? So basically I farm a lot of soil. A lot of soil. Because I convert soil into scrap by turning soil into medium wind turbines. Now I have yet to fully automate it. It's not possible because you can't auto unpackage goods. And you can't auto harvest soil. And you can't auto automatically shred things. So we'll we'll get into that later. I'll try to find workarounds to that. But for now, I have right here the rover setup, and these arms are loading these silos with organics. Now you might run into the case where the arms stop working. It is a known bug, and the developers are working on it. If it does happen, just turn it on. Off and on again, just much like real life. <laughs> so this isn't typical of a actual ro rover setup I would use. I would obviously have a large storage silo B here, full of medium silos, full of soil canisters. And then these silos here will hold the organics. So anyways, I skim the surface of the planet collecting dirt, and you're going to run into organics. You could drive around it, but then it would be uneven, and that would drive me insane. So I just collect it, and then I destroy it. The first idea was to use research chambers, because you can research a resource, a resource, and then you can cancel it, and then what used to happen was those resources would be deleted. So I was going to have a loadout where I would have just three research chambers, a really humble setup, and I would have a storage unit, and once it was empty, I would say activate a button repeater, and then turn the research... Oomba. I was going to say resource chambers, research chambers off and it would delete the resources and then reload them again. I would have to have four, actually eight because the medium storage tray holds eight. Anyways, uh, thanks to the update, uh, research chambers will auto load if you have an arm, but uh, when you stop it, it no longer deletes the resource. So that's really sad news for me. That's really good news for most people because you can't mistakenly delete your research items anymore but I want that ability <laughs> to get rid of resources so hopefully they'll include a trash can which will delete items we don't really have that for now so this will have to suffice you can easily get rid of a uh, re resident compound by adding research chambers so I can uh, modify this uh, layout I can do that I'll show you guys later if you want but for now these arms will grab the organics, load it onto this buffer storage unit here, and then it'll auto load the smelting furnaces, which are turning them into carbon, and then the carbon will pop out here. There we go. Oh, I forgot that I turned off the arms uh, <laughs> to pause it because I thought I was done. But yeah. Uh, and then into this temporary storage area, and then these arms will grab it and then dump it onto here, which will auto load the medium generators. Now I have an extra large platform C, and I have large storage silo Bs here, each of them holding 12 medium generators. And this will use up carbon at a rate of 21.4 carbon per minute. That's really fast because each generator will eat up one carbon every 100 seconds. Now I'm producing carbon at a rate of 24 carbon per minute here because each smelting furnace will produce one carbon in 15 seconds. I have six of them and you know that's uh, 24 carbon because it's there's 15 seconds of times four is 60. I can't talk right now because I'm tired and I've been making content non-stop. Someone send help. <laughs> Anyways. So there you have it. So I'm overproducing carbon at a rate of 2.4, 2.6 carbon per minute. So, you know, there you have it. You can, you can make it so it's a one-to-one. -one. 
if you do the math, I was a little lazy and I didn't want, you know, I, it, to look uneven because I would have to take off a, a smelting furnace and then take off a few generators and it'll look a little weird or asymmetrical. But that said, you can totally get rid of this here, the storage units here and these arms and have these three arms directly drop the carbon onto these storage units. The reason why I'm not doing that is I kind of want a central storage area to make this design more modular. Meaning, if I wanted more smelting furnaces, I can just add them here. And then I can add another generator set up here. I can keep making it larger and larger. Now, the, the larger the central storage area is, the more units you can add on. So, you can make it as large as you want. Anyways, since this is generating so much power, I thought it would be a waste. So why not hook up some batteries to it? So I have a lot of possible ways you can do it. This is just to give you guys some ideas. You can use any platform that you want, but I use a large platform C, extra large platform C. You can add on eight medium batteries, or you can have four large storage silo Bs, all of them holding 12 medium batteries. Now you can also use small batteries depending on you know how many resources you have and how much you want to invest. But, you can have medium uh, storage silos with small batteries, or you can have four large storage silo Bs, each of them holding 12 medium silos, each of them holding 24 <laughs> small batteries. Now I'm going to give you guys some numbers. If you were to max out using this setup, the large storage silo Bs with medium batteries, the large storage silo Bs with medium silos with small batteries, I think the numbers will surprise you. But for the medium batteries, you can have a total of 12,288 units of power. That's right. And a total throughput of 144 units per second. Now that's for the medium batteries. But if you use the small batteries, you're going to max out at 36,864 units of power. That's almost three times the amount. Actually, is that exactly three times the amount? I think it is. My brain is dead right at the moment. And a total throughput of 1,152 units per second. Wow, three times the storage and way more times uh, the throughput. So the obvious drawback is if you use this setup here, like the extra large storage silo B. I don't know why I called it extra large. Large storage silo B with maximum with the small batteries. That's a lot of lithium. You can farm it pretty easily, but if you're lazy like me, you know, you can do make do with medium batteries. But there you have it, and you're, maybe you're like, I don't want to build something this big. I don't want to spend the resources. Don't worry, I got a little baby build for you guys right here. So let's say you're driving up your tractor, your rover, whatever. This song will grab it off of your vehicle or your storage unit, whatever you have. And then we'll plop it onto this. I left it running so it kind of uh, overproduces carbon. Anyways, once it's done smelting, I'll poop it onto here. This time we'll grab it, load it onto this silo. I only have a large storage silo A, so you have eight medium generators attached to that, and you'll use up carbon at a much slower rate, obviously, but you know, it's less work. And I have that hooked up to seven medium batteries and one RTG. Just in case, you know, the batteries lose charge and I have to power up the smelting furnace. You don't have to use RTGs. It's whatever you want. Automation is so flexible and the possibilities are endless. So you guys can make your own production line however you want. So hopefully this gives you guys an idea of what's possible. I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek of other things I'm working on right now. Or if you guys want to check out something crazy. Uh, Till has made a huge calculator. I'll put a link to his Twitch in the description below if you want to check it out. A massive calculator with multiple operations. Uh, absolutely wonderful. Fantastic. Mind-blowing. I think something that will hopefully inspire you guys as well. Anyways, going back. I, just, I made a clock cycle based on how fast you can discharge or recharge a small battery. So let's see. Make sure this is set up correctly. All right, yeah. Wait, why isn't it discharging? 
Okay, it's charging now. All right, so this button here will flip the the cycle type. So basically, you can, as you can see, it's discharging, right? If I push this button, and it'll turn into recharging. So you can choose which direction it's going. Now this button here, let me turn it into uh, discharging real quick. I'm going to wait for a little bit. This button here will pause it. So you have full control over your clock cycle. Or you don't have to use it as a clock cycle. But a way to activate things. So this button again will turn it from discharging to recharging. And this battery will charge and discharge at the same rate. And you can pause it. And then you can have it continue again. So I think this is pretty nifty. Uh, how it works is pretty simple. You just have to look at the wiki and figure out the rate of power generation and have it match up, you know, and have it used at a certain rate so that you can charge or discharge your battery exactly the same. I use three RTGs and three atmospheric condensers. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. I think this will be pretty useful in the future for some builds that I do. Because, you know, you can change it at will and you can pause it. So I think that's pretty handy. Um, I know people have probably made better ones, but that one I made up myself and I'm kind of proud of it. <laughs> it's simple, but it's, it's mine. All right. Don't take that away from me. Another thing that I'm working on, again, because automation, the possibilities are endless. I'm trying to build a automatic catapult. That's right. I want a line of astroneers visiting. And they're going to get into a rover seat. It's going to launch them into space. And the whole thing is going to reset. And so the next dude in line can just hop into the next rover seat. And have him launched into space. Uh, this brings a lot of design problems on how I'm going to get this to work. So it's hurting my brain. But uh, we'll power through. I'm not smart, but I'm stubborn. And I'm going to work on this until I get it. Now, it might take me a long while and I might move on to other projects. But we'll see how far I get. I'll update you guys once I have something working. Now, basically, I had a rover here attached to these winches. And then I had a uh, carbon attached to this winch, these two winches. And it'll move it down and attach it to the storage tray on the rover, which will then snap it forward. And I would have a rover seat just lying on top. And they'll launch it, but not that far. And then once that, that was done, this arm will grab the carbon off of the rover. And then the rover will reset into this position. So it's pretty reliable. But then, you know, it's like, how do I get rover seats to go on top automatically? You know, how does the timing work? This resets way too fast and launches way too fast. It doesn't launch you high enough at all. So, you know, a lot of things to think about. But I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with the update. So there you have it, folks. Uh, I Thank you so much for the support, by the way. I recently reached uh, over 500 subs. I didn't think that I would get to this point. But thanks to you guys and thanks to Astroneer, I made it. And uh, on the road to 1,000. Once I hit 1,000, I can monetize my channel. That's exciting. Something to look forward to. But yeah, uh, I think I've only asked on one video for people to like and subscribe. And I thought about it and I really don't like doing that. I find it annoying because if you like my channel or if you like my content, then I know people will, you know, like or subscribe anyways. Uh, so I don't, I don't like asking for that because I, I believe people will do that. You know, if they genuinely like my channel or content. So yeah. If I ever doing that, you guys can call me. If I, if I ever start doing that, you guys can call me. <laughs> but yeah, I think, um, you know, the bottom line is if my content is good, then people will sub. So if people aren't subbing, I just got to make my content better. That's it, you know? So I, yeah, I get it. I'm not, I'm not the best channel around. My content isn't the best around, but I'm definitely trying my best to learn and, and improve. And it's hopefully you guys... Uh, be patient with me and stick around long enough to hopefully see me improve and reach that point where you know I can I can earn those subs and earn all the likes all right so look behind there behind the scenes 
Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed what you saw. Hopefully it comes in handy. Hopefully it inspires you guys to check out automation in Astroneer and come up with your own builds. It's honestly game changing. It changes the game. I know a lot of you guys will probably not use it or be interested because it doesn't fit your playstyle. But honestly speaking, there's so many things you can do with this that it's mind boggling. You can check out Thil's calculator. Till's calculator. It's incredible. If you're not on the Astroneer Discord, you can go there and check it out. I'll link his Twitch in the description below. I don't know if he has a YouTube. I'm going to go check that out as well. If I do find it, I'll link it in the description. Uh, it's it's incredible. Props to him. He did a lot of work. Uh, that's, yeah. That's, that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much for dropping by and watching as always. If you guys have any questions, comments, things you'd like to see... Or for me to cover please feel free to leave a comment down below if you want uh to see me make any sort of idea that you have let me know obviously i'll give you creds i'll try my best to make it let's say there's a lot of ideas of like a like an arm an arm production line just a chain of arms just bringing up a material into space you know that's simple that's silly that's useless but i can make that you know <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of, I want to make my catapult though. This is this is something I'm working on. A fully automatic and resetting catapult would I think be awesome. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it or if I can't even do it, but I'll definitely try my best. Anyways, before I keep rambling, thank you once again for all the support. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. And hope you guys are staying safe and staying out there. 2020 hasn't been the best year, and hopefully it gets better for you guys. Uh, and as always, catch you guys next time.